Welcome back to the Meetings Podcast. This is Mike McCallum with Grash Ackermans and Media, and today we have Will Curran. Hi, Will. Hey, Mike. Will is the president and founder of Endless Entertainment, and as the founder of Endless Entertainment, Will has been named one of the 40 under 40 event industry leaders, uh, 35 entrepreneurs under the age of 35, and Inc. Magazine's coolest college startup of all before graduating college. Wow. Uh, I should have read this before I read it now. But uh, Will has been producing events since high school when he started his first company and now has worked in production of the largest of large event clients such as em Emerald City Comic Con, Anheuser-Busch, and The Color Run. His team's mission is to simplify the event planning process by creating the equation of for an event's perfect solution. They also relentless, relentless, relentlessly seek to be to be the name in customer service in the events industry. From event logistics to business development to technical production, Will has a diverse background in growing events and companies to the next level. Um, I wanted to say before you say anything, Will, because I know you're going to start talking. And, uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to say that I was just telling you that I went to your website this morning. And um, it's a fantastic website. And I think people should go check it out, even if they're not looking for um, event help. I don't know who else would be listening to this besides people in the events industry, but check it out as a good way of having a really informative website. And, you know, the marketing, the eBooks, the webinars, you're doing it all right. I mean, and I was just telling you, it, it, it's inspiring to my old ass that I should be doing more stuff with my own company. But anyway, so let's get into you. Um, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. And I don't know how you got Batman to come. Uh, <laughs> It's a, it's a very, very special request. Uh, you know, um, uh, me and the, the guy under the mask are close personal friends. <laughs> yeah, and I guess I should tell people since this is an audio podcast, that, <laughs> yeah. you know, we're doing this on Blab. We're doing um, an experiment to try to uh, record on Blab, which is kind of fun. If you haven't tried Blab, it's blab.im. And uh, Will actually is in your office, I assume. Yep, yep. And he has a uh, Batman with him behind him. That's yep, so we do a ton of Comic Con, so I just have tons of comic book characters. I'm also a huge super nerd around like Flash and Arrow and things like that. So, you know, I so it's, cool. it's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was watching the, uh, you have a you have great case studies on your site about uh, Comic Con. One of them I, I, I didn't. Look Thank you. But that, what a cool uh, video, too. Nice job. Thank you. Thank oh. you. I appreciate it. Always trying to, you know, uh, express uh, how we do things. And, you know, video is an awesome format for doing that, for sure. It is. It is. And are you a video editor? Is that one of your things you oh, do? Oh, no. I, so I, I was definitely an amateur video editor when I first yeah. uh, was, like, through high school and middle school and was trying to figure that sort of stuff out. I had, I had a passion for it. But, no, that I definitely uh, – there are people much better at that than me that I just say the vision of what I'm looking for and they make it happen. Nice. <laughs> well, that's half the battle there, too, is the vision of it all. So – Exactly, exactly. Um, do you have a favorite quote? Ooh, yeah, totally. Um, so my probably my favorite quote. I mean, I was trying thinking about what my favorite quote is of all time, and I um, it, there was a lot to choose from. But my favorite probably all time quote would have to be: uh, "Try not to be a person of success, but be a person of value." Uh, Albert Einstein said that. Um, and, uh, it means a ton to me, I think, because, uh, you know, as a young entrepreneur, you know, starting my first company in high school, um, and growing it, you know, uh, you get kind of this, uh, success really early on. People say, man, you're so successful at such a young age. And it, it to be honest, it kind of goes to your head a little bit. You kind of go like, man, I'm so successful and everything like that. And you almost uh, a little bit want to sit back and kind of like chill and relax and be like, man, I've done so much success in such a short time. But what I realized is, um, with that quote, when I heard that the first time, I realized that that's not what it's about. The reason why I think I have been so successful is because I've given so much value and I've tried to be out there and I get more return from that than trying to be more successful, trying to be a number one AV company in the world or, you know, trying to be getting more awards or things like that. I just put my value out there and, the, you know, the universe returns it for sure. Very, very cool. That's a great that's a great one and a great backup to why you picked it. Thank you. Yeah. And so when you. Uh, in high school, you started your first company. What it was an events company? Uh, yeah. So the company that the what that is now is kind of evolved, um, basically out of the company I started in high school in 2007. I had a couple other small little things like an internet radio station and you know uh, blogging and things like that before before all this. But uh, I started in 2007 doing DJing and backyard parties actually. Nice. <laughs> oh, well, that's 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 doing it. I mean, that's where it starts, right? Exactly, exactly. You know, like uh, playing the teeny boppers, top forty music. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's great. Well, I mean, that's my, my first question was to you is like how you got into this business. So it's, it seems yeah. like that's how you started in and how did it grow from there? Like, did you say one day, Hey, I could be doing more than this or is it? Yeah. Oh no, totally. I mean, like, I think I've throughout my entire life, I've always had this incessant need to like, like go to that next level and try to accomplish something I've never done before. Um, so yeah, started DJing backyard parties, um, came to, and then kind of grew that throughout high school. Obviously when I got to college, got way more free time. I was DJing like seven days a week all the time, making good money, but you know, was exhausted and I was kind of, you know, burnt out from DJing, I think. And I started seeing over on the East coast, these companies do these massive high school dances, like 5,000 high school students in a, like these track rooms with, you know, 50, 60,000 RAV productions, bigger than some corporate events that we see now. And, um, you know, it was just absolutely amazing. I was like, oh my gosh, my high school dances were horrible. I want to make these awesome and do what they did. <laughs> and basically, yeah, just decided to um, try it. Uh, six months later, I convinced the school to do it and said, and proved the concept and said, okay, we can do this. Well, let's spread the word about this. Do all of them. We had like 70% of the market in Arizona and did these massive dances. They looked like Usher concerts, like, you know, all the latest moving heads and uh, like lighting and cool sound systems, live percussionists play along DJs. But again, I got kind of burnt out and kind of hit this cap where I wanted to do bigger things. Um, long story short, um, started doing even bigger events um, and realized I had to start working with a lot of different AV and production companies, essentially, um, and realized there was like definitely a common thread that went through a lot of different production companies. And that was there was a lack of customer service and ease with working with them. You know, the reason why I think I had a lot of easiness working with them was because I was like a techie guy. I wanted to know how the wireless mic worked, how the lights worked. I wanted to knew I figured all that sort of stuff out. But most clients I was talking to, they were like, I don't care if it's a Martin LED fixture or a inhalation fixture, or how that all works out. It just got, has to work. And so we said, you know what? Um, I think like producing these events is cool and all, but let's start our own AV company essentially. Um, and so we bought all our own gear, started our own AV company and basically took everything we learned from working with AV companies and turned it into our own kind of thing. Um, been su hugely successful. A lot of the clients that we've been picking up have uh, loved what we've worked with, our creativity and like our ability to make things super, super easy uh, as well as like, you know, just the way we make it all work, I think is just one reason why we have been so successful. Yeah, no, it's inspiring to, to hear you talk. And, and so what was, what was the, um, what was the biggest like roadblock for you during this, this time? What, what's been the oh biggest, so let's, somebody's listening to this thing and I want to do the same thing. Like what, what, what was some of the things that you ran into that were like, Oh God, Oh my I gosh. I didn't anticipate this. <laughs> totally. I mean like entrepreneurship and starting your own company and like do, doing anything in life, right. There's always going to be roadblocks. So there's been like tons I could go through, you know, like I've done like some of them, for example, like when I was in high school, I had I dealt with a lot with ageism. Like, you know, when I, you're a young kid and you know, before I grew the beard, and looked like I was way older than I am now, um, you know, it was really tough to convince people to spend lots of money on a kid, basically, yeah. and a guy who had an idea. So that was really tough. But I, you know, I overcome a lot of that through like marketing and just proving myself saying like, hey, look what I've done with this client. You know, why can't I do that for you? Um, and also just a huge amount of professionalism for sure. You know, I'm um, professionalism is one of our core values at Endless. So, you know, we really integrated that into what we did. Um, other really big roadblocks that I've had, um, I think that they're um, more recently a big roadblock that I've been having is that since we're doing stuff all over the country now um, and literally traveling like crazy, like this week, I'm literally like, I have to go to Northern Arizona for a client meeting, drive back, fly out to California for a meeting, fly back, vent in Arizona on Saturday. Like it's just crazy amount of traveling I've been doing is, um, you know, how do I balance it all and how do I get everything done um, while also, you know, as things are growing and scaling and everything like that. So that's been a, a really huge challenge uh, with uh, that sort of portion, because I think a lot of times when people get really excited about travel, they're like, yes, this is going to be so awesome. And then you're like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to see another hotel room ever again. Um, and then I guess the last uh, huge um, roadblock or challenge that um, I may have had or I've ha I have had, not may have had, um, is definitely um, – finding my rhythm of my life that what what makes me happy mm -hmm. um because you know as you own a company you know in the events industry i think especially we get it's really easy to get burnt out and exhausted right after doing a big event or something like that so what i found out is there's it's not as much about balance like some people say like how do you balance you know work and life and always i think that it's more of an integration and it's more about finding little small breaks along the way so for example like 
every Thursday I go out and see the newest movies that come out. I'm a huge movie junkie. Um, every Tuesday I have dinner with my close friends. Um, you know, like those sort of things like I count on with my routine that give me breaks throughout the week uh, to be able to continue going. So then that way I can power through not only Monday to Friday, working with clients and developing out their event strategies and everything like that, and you know, building awesome AV quotes, those sort of things, then go through the whole weekend of mm-hmm. events and then circle back and do that again with no breaks. Mm-hmm. So um, that was really, really a big challenge for me, for sure. Yeah, that's, yeah, it's interesting to hear you talk. It's fun. The traveling is crazy. And I, I've gone through whoo, over the years, you know, <laughs> totally. and like, okay, this is uh, taking a break, getting back into it, taking a break, getting back into it. It's uh, it's, it is a difficult, that, I think that's one of the hardest things about the business. You hit it on the head is that it, you, you striving so hard to be successful. And then once you become successful, you're working all the time, you know, <laughs> exactly. and it's great and you have money and you're enjoying stuff, but then you start to figure out that, oh, you know. How I balance all this yeah, energy. Yeah, you got to balance it. Yeah. And, and, uh, and I've told other people, for me, I do a lot of like meditating now every day and cool. it's really helped me. And it's been like, you know, I thought before, oh, that's crazy crap. You know, I should just no, have totally. a glass of whiskey it's or amazing something. amazing how it works, right? <laughs> it does. It amazingly works. And um, I tell people that, and especially in our industry, I hope I, I hope more people start to do it because I think it'll help mm-hmm. a lot of people get through what you're, what you're going through. But, Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so how do you see your company in the future? What, what's going to happen with all this great work and what's the game plan? Are you taking over the, uh, taking over the world? <laughs> um, I try not to think of it like a, a world domination standpoint, but um, <laughs> you know, I'm I my big thing is always just trying to uh, be in front of as more people as possible. Let them know that endless exists. Um, I love to do more and more events, bigger events. You know, the more I can impact and really help people know that there is an AV company out there that's easy to work with, the more I, I, I feel like the industry will be changing for sure. And, uh, you know, it's awesome because since we started doing this, we definitely are seeing uh, the tone change in the industry already. I think people are finally reacting to what we're doing. Um, so, you know, that's a huge goal for us is obviously more events. Um, and, you know, for me, um, a big goal for us, I think in the next three years or so is going to be now that we're nationally and doing things all over the place, literally from like Seattle, Washington, Miami, to Iowa, everywhere in between is um go the, is breaking that international bubble um the overseas bubble for sure so we haven't done anything overseas yet i have a uh, client that i'm working with hopefully fingers crossed for bangkok uh for next year nice. um, so that's a that's a huge goal for us because you know if I, I want our clients to basically say to us hey i need endless and it's not a question of how or you know those sort of things it's just it works so uh, international would be really really awesome for us um and then another big thing is you know uh you know, it's funny, like over the last couple of years since we started doing all the content and the ebooks and everything like that, a big goal of us was to become an industry influencer in the AV and production space. Um, and since we started doing all the content, I think we finally achieved that goal. Uh, but, you know, I think there's always room for improvement. I'd love to push out more content. I'd love to have, you know, from us going from four blogs a week to doing, you know, four blogs a day, just yeah. pushing out more and more awesome content and helping people out. Because I want, I don't, I want us to be like a resource that when people are like, Hey, I need help with events. They can come to us. Um, and it's not a matter of going to a million different resources for sure. So that's a huge goal. I think for us too, in the right. future. It's a great, great idea and a great, a great goal. Thank you. <laughs> um, so right now, uh, what's something you're working on right now that you would like to talk about? I mean, oh, yeah. is there a project oh. or something you're talking about uh, doing right now that you might want to share something cool or maybe just something you're doing just to kind of get a kind of more of a breath of what what you're doing or uh, what Endless is doing? Oh, my gosh. So could what I'm you. working on, I could talk about for like years on and um, what I can, what I'm allowed to talk about now. That's a very important issue. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, the well, well, that's true. I mean, a lot of these things are, I mean, I have... I have a lot of experience in that, in that you do cool stuff, but you're not allowed to share it. Exactly. You're like, afterwards, you're like, yeah. look, I've been working on this for 12 months. Check it yeah. Out. Yeah. And you can't say anything about it. Yeah. Or exactly. videos that we've done videos and stuff where we you know, can't show it to anybody. And it's like, this is the coolest stuff we've ever done. You know? <laughs> 
But exactly. anyway, but go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Um, yeah, I think um, one of the big things is, yeah, we're pushing through the content side. And that's really, really important for us. So I'm working on a lot of really big, um, like, industry-changing content, um, like a really big ebook I'm personally working on writing right now is, like, this huge ultimate guide to AV quotes. And I know you do the AV for planner stuff. And, like, I love it. Um, and a huge amount of inspiration came from that to start this ebook of basically, you know, how do you compare AV quotes? How do you understand AV quotes? How do you, like, it's like, demystifying like key to av quotes basically it's this massive guide i've put together nice. um nice. it's, it's gonna be really really huge so that's a huge thing i'm working on i am a lot to talk about um i think another um big portion of it that i'm working on uh is that uh, we actually just made a a big change um we still have all of our warehouses full of gear and everything like that but we made a really conscious decision um over the last couple months that we're actually moving our team completely remote so the employees themselves other than the people working in the warehouse prepping the gears driving the trucks um they actually are not locked into any sort of location so for example with me nice. um this next uh basically this next month or so i'm doing tons of traveling between california chicago miami and everything like that um i can be anywhere my clients need me to be um and i can still get everything done so that's a huge thing for us is that as we're national we didn't want to we didn't want people to say hey i have to be fly my employees to Phoenix. I didn't want to say, oh, we have multiple offices. I just want to make my, give my employees the freedom to do what they want so they're truly happy, but also so that we can literally be anywhere at moment's notice um, and still get everything done. So that's a really cool thing that I've been working on as well um, and really huge shift in culture um, as well as uh, happiness definitely towards the employee side. Yeah, and so how will you keep the culture going if you're not to, uh, sorry, I don't know if this is a, a too depth of a question, <laughs> but how will you keep that that culture going are you going to have um, regular meetings i mean I don't yeah know if you want to talk about it. you don't have to but you know uh but no totally and, and it's still a little bit of thing that we're a little bit figuring out as we go along but you know um this decision was definitely not taken lightly um i did a lot of research into it and what i found is one of the biggest things with keeping the culture and you know being able to re manage this remote culture is over communication for sure um is that you wake up in the morning you say hey guys i'm online i'm gonna get some work done oh hey guys i'm gonna go take the dog for a walk you know being able to communicate you know, so then people know kind of how busy you are what's going on when you're on on when you're not um that's really important um, we use slack at our company um slack yeah, is basically like we do too yeah awesome all right it is. everyone I can't tell you it's my favorite thing in the world <laughs> what's it awesome is. is all my clients are on it getting on it too so i'm like oh, super excited perfect. to like basically utilize it for every like i actually replaced my texting app on my phone with slack because i just use slack more than i use texting now yeah um but yeah, Slack is basically like a chat program for those who don't know. Um, like basically, um, we set up channels and groups within the, the company for people to chat. And there's a bunch of really, uh, allows you to communicate really, really well. Integration so we can get notifications when signatures for contracts come in and you know new uh, opportunities come uh, across our board and those sort of things. But also one of the best things is definitely the Giphy feature where you do like type slash Giphy in a word and it picks a random GIF from the internet. So there's certain things like out there, technology that you can utilize to keep the culture are going for sure yeah. but nothing definitely beats the you know the face-to-face -face skype video um those sort of things and, and talking on the phone for sure so yeah. that's a, definitely a huge part of what we're doing that sounds great sounds like a great idea so Thank you. all right so let's get into some other questions um sure. so take me through a uh typical day uh, so what, what's it like for you? You wake up in the morning and do you have like, uh, what's your, do you have like any morning rituals, like food, exercise, like, do you, what do you do? What's something that you could share that, do you look at the same things on the web every day? Totally. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love, I love this question because actually no one ever asked me this question. I always want to share what I do. Um, <laughs> especially recently because I made the, the, the conscious decision to move remote. Um, things completely changed. So for the remote lifestyle, you ha like your routines are everything as well. Um, so um, yeah, my typical day, um, the way I wake up, I wake up in the morning um, pretty early around like 6.30 or so. Um, first thing I do is just like throw on my shoes and my running shorts and I just go for a run uh, for a while as long as I usually can, um, especially now that I'm, uh, <laughs> everyone's going to hate me that I say this, now that I'm getting older, um, I definitely know I need uh, yeah, exercise for sure. You do. You do. So, you know, when I was in high school, I could, I, you know, I did soccer and track and everything like that. But I remember like even through college, like I didn't feel like I needed to exercise. And I wasn't sure if it was like lifting gear and things like that really really helped me going but like definitely now I'm more of an office role and working I need to be able to exercise so I go for a run um, listening to music while I do that come back 
shower, get ready, dressed, and everything like that. Even if I'm like no face to face or Skype meetings or anything like that, I still get 100% dressed. So I feel like I'm like ready for the day. Um, I do a thing called a five minute journal. Um, you can buy it online. I think it's five minute journal.com. Um, it's basically asks you certain questions. So for example, every day starts with a quote or a challenge and then says, what is, uh, your, what are you grateful for? What would make today great? And then you do a daily affirmation statement. And then at nighttime, when they go to bed, um, I do what are three things that made, t uh, today amazing, uh, three amazing things happen today. And then, um, what is one thing that you would change, uh, which is really, really cool. So I do that every day. Um, from there, um, I'm usually listening to podcasts or I'm listening to an audio book. Um, usually while I'm in the shower, I have a big Bluetooth speaker in my bathroom so I can like, <laughs> listen to everything. Um, from you the take, for, take long showers to that now. I very long showers, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a long shower guy for sure. Um, it's like my peaceful time. Ironically, the shower is where I came up with my logo. So I think like my shower is almost my sacred space. <laughs> that is very cool. Um, from there, I'm kind of totally miss. Oh, the one thing I do before I even go for a run is I always make my bed. Um, so that was something I picked up from Tim Ferriss. Um, and it's like a big military thing as well as that you make your bed. So, you know, no matter what happens, I always feel accomplished. That I at least got one thing done and make my bed, uh, no matter how bad the day is. Um, I do crazy. the same thing. So, and it's awesome. My bed always looks yeah. so good now. Yeah. So exciting. I make it when my wife's still in there too, which is nice. <laughs> she can't get out. Gets her out of there. <laughs> <laughs> no, she can't get out and then she stays <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay, it's okay. Um, and then, so once I kind of get that done and I'm like dressed and everything's done and the journal's done, then I go meditate, um, just like yourself. Nice. Um, it's been awesome. Uh, I had a friend who recommended it to me. I did it and I was just like, like for an excited person like I am that talks a mile a minute and like, you know, I'm my energy is really important to me. Um, meditating has been huge for me. Um, I use an app called Headspace, actually. Really, really cool. Um, for those who are trying to get into meditation, it's basically guided meditations and things like that. It's a quick app you download and you get points and challenges for completing. And then they have different uh, meditations for different things. So like when you're stressed out or you're really sad, you can do all these different meditations to help you get in the right way. But um, they, there's a paid version which has the extras, but the free one you can get away with just doing the 10-day challenge over and over again, which I did for a while um, and really recommend to get in the habit of uh meditation um so i, I do I that also use it too. yeah oh you do yeah. oh my gosh it's yeah. awesome isn't it yeah 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 i would do it for the last year and a half i think using that and just going through the different ones some oh of them gosh. i'll hit and i'll be like i don't like this at all and i'll just dump out of it and go to another one <laughs> totally totally so we need to become buddies so we can like challenge each other on it too right <laughs> that's interesting that's a good idea yeah <laughs> Because you can't do that. Just to make sure you're doing it. Because yeah, you know, yeah, some, you like see if you sometimes if a couple who, days have a and it's nice too. It it pops up on my phone and says, "Hey, have you gotten your headspace today?" Or something. Yeah, like, I miss it exactly. for a few days or something. Anyway, sorry, and sorry. I love go, you you go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't want to keep interrupting with. No, that, it's but. okay. So I mean, like obviously, great, great minds think alike. Um, <laughs> um, and then really big i mean like th throughout this entire time a lot of times there's a big temptation for me like check my email i really try to avoid email sometimes i'll do like a quick check to make sure there's nothing like urgent fiery that i need to like so for example i woke up this morning and someone's like i need to have a call at this time and it was like in the middle of my routine so i kind of broke my routine to do that but um most of the time i just power through get through all this and then go make a bowl of breakfast and usually what i i try to do um it i haven't been able to do it this last like week because it's been crazy busy with a bunch of opportunities coming through but I make myself a bowl of cereal and then so I'm like gesturing because my kitchen's over here and then my couch is over here um, I make a bowl of cereal and then I usually go on my couch and I have my RSS reader Feedly that I use and I just scroll through all of the articles that are kind of coming up through the day mm -hmm. and quickly look and see if there's anything that catches my eye and then I add them to my pocket I actually don't read them typically I just pocket them um, but it allows me a lot of times like for example um, Mashable is great for staying on top of current events because it's just like quick headlines knowing what's going on um, and things like that. So that helps me kind of stay on top of my news and what's going on in pop culture in the world and everything like that. Um, and then usually from there, I just um, come in and uh, start with my Todoist and look at what I have to get done for the day. Um, and Todoist is like my task manager. And then just start chunking away at that um, and just knowing what I have to get done and just powering through my to-do list, basically. So that's my morning routine. <laughs> and then very, everything else is completely cool. different every day. Very cool. And, I, and I, it's funny, I do, and I have just implemented this stuff myself, like making the bed and that kind of thing for the last year and a half. And it, I can feel, I feel so much better. I mean, that's what my shoulder now is all yeah. screwed up. It's been kind of a pain in the ass because it's really <laughs> put things into perspective. Like um, that kind of stuff really helps still. Cause I like yeah. to go to the, I like, I used to get up and go 
I haven't been doing it since this, but getting up and all, I, I'm really tight because I'm old and tight. And I, I would go tight in a good way, right? Like, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. I would sit in the hot tub to loosen up and then I would stretch. But while I'm sitting in the hot tub, then I would do the meditating in the hot tub. And then when I get out, um, I can't do that long of a meditation. So I'm only doing like 15 minutes or 10 to 15. Yeah. Then I would stretch and then I would go to the gym. So that was kind of how I would start my day. And then I eat oatmeal every morning. That was kind of my thing. And I dropped dropped some weight with that. But anyway, that's That's awesome. That's me. But anyway, it's funny. We're very similar. Yeah, totally. So um, what's the best? um, Wait, wait. wait, I was going to say what's uh, Well, we're going along here. We're like Um, getting through all the good questions. (laughs) Yeah. What's what what um, what book do you gift others? If you do you give everybody a book or or do you recommend like uh, blogs or podcasts? Like what are the things you recommend to people? Oh, my gosh. That's like a Tim Ferriss question right there for sure. I'm stealing a lot of his questions. (laughs) Honestly, I listen to it right now. Questions. Yeah. Tim Tim Ferriss is awesome. Um, You know, I can recommend books and podcasts like I am like an information junkie. I call it. Um, I I listen to a ton of podcasts, listen to a lot of audiobooks. Um, listen, read a, I'll read a lot of books as well. I do the blogs. So um, podcast-wise, man, I'm going to try to avoid the industry a little bit. That's good. Uh, see if I can think of it. I'm going to pull up. So I'm using Pocket Casts, which I know Brant would be really happy that I'm using, um, is for my all my podcasts. Um, possibly one of my favorite podcasts is um, – not Tim Ferriss show, um, the Growth Show by HubSpot. They do a really great podcast on uh, like interviewing leaders of companies and um, you know marketers. So and, and they and what's interesting is HubSpot's obviously a marketing company. The Growth Show is more about like growth of companies. So I really like that one um, because you get to hear these stories of you know all these great startups and how they all are growing like crazy. Like and it, they had to see just along what you're doing with your company. So it's exactly funny how exactly. That's how it's honing in with you right now. Exactly, exactly. And I'm a huge HubSpot fan. We use it at Endless and everything like that too. So, you know, a little bit of a fanboy in there. But, um, you know, a lot of what they're bringing in is really, really cool. So I love that podcast. Um, Audiobook-wise, um, I just read a really, really good audiobook as I totally try to bring it up as I uh, explain it. There's a really good book called Brain Rules. Um, that was all about like the psychology of how our brains work and how it affects us at work and school and life. Um, and one of the interesting things is, uh, like for example, one of the tips they came up with is that our brains naturally want to nap in the afternoon. So it's always funny. Everyone's like after lunch, you're like, oh, the afternoon dip, that kind of happens. And everyone kind of thinks it's like, okay, to just kind of power through it. But actually the book talks about the psychology of and how our brains actually chemicals work that we need a nap right after lunch. Um, and there's a bunch of famous people. Um, I'm totally forgetting all their names. Completely yeah, yeah. That I had nap, did naps in the afternoon. So um, I've heard of that book. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really cool. That. Yeah. Brain rules. Um, really loved that book. Um, got a lot of really great things. Um, and I think meditation came out of that too as well. And they had a little bit of uh, supporting on the meditation side a uh, book i really enjoyed recently as well from the business side is um but also if even if you just love you know iron man technology kind of things like that is yeah. elon musk's uh, uh biography it was fantastic um loved it the audiobook was awesome too because the narrator did different voices for every person yeah. so he kind of does his own accents and things like that so it made it really entertaining but the story and like what they do it makes you like makes me want to dump all my money into tesla and what they're doing because it's just brilliant what they're pulling off um so really 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 cool uh book um and then let me think of another good book and if you know i'm a big sales guy too so i do a lot of sales stuff a really great book i recently read was the sales acceleration formula by Mark Roberge, um, really good book about building sales teams and hiring your first salesperson. So if someone's trying to build their first company out there and trying to hire their first salesperson and build their sales team, great book for that. Nice, 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 nice. Um, okay, so I get so uh, entranced in what you're saying, I forget to look at my question. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Which is you good. Know, it's, it's a lime green shirt that's cheap. <laughs> yeah, you know? I wore mine too in, in honor of your... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. So yeah, thank you, Mike. <laughs> uh, uh, you can't see that on the audio podcast, obviously. Uh, but I am wearing a lime green shirt, also. Awesome. Um, all right. Uh, Will, have you ever had a nickname? I have had nicknames. Oh my and, gosh! I, and why? Uh, and what? What? What is? Tell me one of them and why. Why were you nicknamed it? 
I've had a bunch of different nicknames. Um, so an interesting fact is that up until sixth grade, I went by Patrick. My full name is William Patrick Kern the fourth. Um, so my dad's name is William as well, and he's uh, you know Doctor William or Bill um, is the more like informal name. Um, so my parents didn't want to confuse us, so they called me Patrick. Um, but then in sixth grade, there was like three Patricks, and I was like, I want to be Will, so I changed my name back over to Will. Um, so that that's really interesting. Um, through soccer, when I played soccer growing up through middle school, I went by Petrie was my nickname. Everyone called me like the land before time <laughs> dinosaur. Um, and then very interestingly enough as well. Um, so because I'm used to be a DJ, I had a bunch of different DJ names. Um, my main DJ name was DJ Pip, P-I-P. And when I got to high school and played soccer, my one of the guys on the team was like, hey, by the way, do you have any nicknames other than Will? And I was like, well, my DJ name is DJ Pip. And he goes, Pip. <laughs> And so everyone at my school that played soccer with me would call me Pip. Um, so um, really, really interesting. And obviously, you know, DJ Will C is like kind of my DJ name now uh, when I do like my recorded mixes and things like that. But it had tons of different nicknames. But weirdly enough, they've all centered around like apparently like the letter P and W. Apparently. Yeah. That's hilarious. So, yeah. I used to I was a I was a fireman for a long time and I was in a in a fire academy and we had to have our names on front of our shirt uh, oh, awesome you know you know and it said mcallen but the mc was way over here and the uh -huh. allen so everyone called me mc allen basically so that was my <laughs> that was my uh my the nickname. Brand. <laughs> exactly <laughs> kind of funny it goes with the dj thing but i did not dj at all um all right so what's the best advice you've ever received oh, i've gotten a lot of really good advice um, I think one of the best advices I ever got was this idea. I've heard it like a million different ways, but the best like quote I ever heard around it was that your network equals your net worth. Mm -hmm. um, it's this idea that um, you know they always say it's not about what you know, it's about who you know, but it's also about who knows you and all those things like that, basically. And what I've realized over the years is that you know. As I have you know, grown the company, there's a lot of things I don't know, but there's a lot of great people who can help me out there. So that's where one really important part of your network. But what I found is that the the people that you meet, they sometimes like surprise you in what they are going to end up doing. You know, for example, um, you know, we we met at the tech conference and basically, you know, decide, hey, we're going to do a podcast. I'm totally going to stay in touch like forever, basically, because I we never know like what's going to come out of this, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, out yeah. of out of that one event, you know, I met like five different people, got five new clients out of it. So there, that's just an example of one. But one of my favorite stories is uh, I competed in the Global Student Entrepreneur Awards uh, a long time, uh, not a long time, like a couple of years ago in New York. And one of the girls I was competing with me, um, his name was Sarah, and she actually competed uh, uh, and had this company, uh, I forgot what it was called, but it was basically like a, a salad shop, like healthy eating uh, style. And basically, she uh competed we both didn't win the whole competition but we became same stayed good friends and kept in touch throughout the years long story short i get a facebook message one day from her and you know like uh i found out that she shut down her company and everything like that and we, we you know but still stayed in touch basically and you know one of those things that you most people would just kind of like disregard that and like may throw away that relationship you know never talk to someone ever again i don't know whatever may happen well long story short she facebook messaged me and it's like hey um, I, ha I have an event coming up. I just need some help. Can you answer some questions for me? So I was like, yeah, let's just set up a call. I like talking more than I like emailing or whatever it is. Right. She's like, okay, cool. So we hop on the call and she explains. She's like, for, for those who don't, for you don't know, like I, I, I now work at Anheuser-Busch. I'm doing all their events. I'm doing these massive events and I have to put on like a good 100 events a year, whatever it may be. And she's explaining this whole thing. And I'm just like, wow, this is really, this is really cool. And she's like, and I need help. Do you want to be my vendor? It's like this massive contract, you know, I, that listed my bio that, you know, that's a Anheuser Bush is one of my yeah. clients. It's a huge thing. And she's like, Do you want to do it? And I'm like, Yeah, totally. 100%. I want Anheuser Bush as a client. She's like, All right, cool. You're going to do it. And it was like that. And it was because of one relationship. We met, knew each other from one weekend years back. I ended up getting Anheuser Bush, one of my biggest clients, from it. So, it just goes to show you that you never know who, what's going to happen, and people are going to definitely surprise you for sure. Um, so your network definitely equals your net worth. Build up your LinkedIn, utilize it. You know, ask people who do you know that can help you with this, and work your network for sure because it's really, really, really valuable too. That's that's very good advice. That's very good advice you have just given everyone. Thank you. <laughs> 
took a uh, long two years to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's great. It is. It's really. It's really true, and that's basically why I started doing this podcast because I just wanted to talk to people. You know, oh. it's like it's. I can call you on the phone, but might as well make it kind of fun. And it's Absolutely. also easier for me to call you, and to get you to come talk to me if we're doing it, so other people can listen. I mean, it's yeah. it's you're you're so right. The network, and and I have to say that. I'd say probably every single one of the jobs that I've gotten over the years is from my network, not from some sort of cold calling or, totally. you know, totally. it's, it's interesting anyway, but I think, Absolutely. Absolutely. okay. So um, what's working for you right now? I know you said Slack is working really well and oh, yeah. we've talked about Slack on the podcast a lot, cool. but um, um, what else? What's, what's, uh, are you using some sort of new um, vitamin uh, <laughs> app, you know, uh, you, you talked about your exercise and some of the things you do for, uh, your own peace of mind. Um, totally. is there a hack or a time saver or something that you could share? Yeah, totally. Um, I'll try to avoid the more, the things I think a lot of people are talking about and I'll talk about the things that really had a lot of impact for me personally. Um, so one thing was that when I went remote, I went from having an office where a lot of times work came to me, people had questions. I, I had to go stop by other people's offices to help mm -hmm. them. But with this new remote culture, um, we had people were very much just getting their own things done. So I had to make sure that I was getting my stuff done. I was very disciplined. So for me, Todoist has been really, really impactful for me. Having a to-do manager that basically gives me points and allows me to manage not just, hey, here's my list of all the things. Because I was using Trello before, which was a really uh -huh. great software for managing the processes. We use that to manage our blog publishing schedule. But I had an issue where, you know, what happens if you call me and say, hey, I need help with this, but it's not for another two weeks. Do I have to make a whole column called two weeks later from now? You know, whatever it was. And Todoist really allowed me to manage my to-dos really, really well. Um, it integrates with everything. So, for example, when I star an email in my Gmail, it creates a to-do for me. When a new calendar invite adds. So I can really get an idea of what I have to get done that day. That's really <laughs> important. So I knew I, like, I, on my, my to-do list is Mike's podcast. Like, I have to get this done today. Um, and so I knew when I was planning my to-dos the night before at 8 p.m., um, I knew that this was going to come up, so I couldn't schedule anything from you know like 11 to 1 p.m. because this was going to be my focus during that time. Very cool. And so that that was really good. Um, oh, this is completely random. Sorry, I just like love talking about this thing. I have the Note 5 um, cell phone, uh -huh, and it uh -huh. has a new like wide angle selfie camera. So I've been taking selfies like crazy with people, <laughs> but it's an awesome conversation starter. So like all the time, like you know, I'll meet people. Like for example, we did it at the the event uh, of the year awards. Is I was just like, oh my gosh, like we talk on Twitter all the time. Let's take a selfie together. So if you look at my Instagram, I just have tons of selfies of like event influencers like crazy. Um, so that's been really, that's great. Uh, really, really cool. I'm just kind of creating things that like help me stand out a little bit. Um, and then if I can think of like one other thing that's been really huge for me, um, I've been recently doing a lot of calling via my my computer using like a USB headset. I'm looking into wireless headsets right now because I'm kind of like right now I really want to get a glass of water, but like I'm stuck to the wire. Right. Um, so it's really rough. Um, but um, I did. I totally forgot to take your advice and get the glass of water before the podcast started. <laughs> um, but calling via computer has been huge for me. I hate talking on the phone. It's like it's always hard for me to hear. I'm already losing my hearing. I feel like already. But I've been using a app called Switch, uh, Switch Communications, and it allows you to call people via your computer. But what's also great is if I'm on the phone with you talking to me on my computer, but let's say I have to start leaving real quick for like another meeting, I can switch it over to my phone or I can switch it over to another computer. And so basically the idea of Switch allows you to switch devices, allows me to record calls, send text messages. Um, so it allows me to get a lot, you know, a lot more phone calls done really, really well and sounds Very awesome. Cool. So getting a lot more uh, phone calls and conferences done for sure. And the sound is really good. I, I think somebody else was talking about this and they're using it for podcasting because oh, wow. the sound is so good compared to Skype. You know, the yeah. Skype, you get that thing with Skype. Totally. Well, it'll be interesting to see how this blab comes out too. Uh, yeah, like how we're using this, but um, too. very interesting, very interesting. So totally. I can talk about like tech and days. So if any of you guys are really interested in like learning about apps and things like that, I literally, you guys can tweet me uh, all day long and I'm always happy to, to share my coolest tools for CRMs and, you know, uh, task management softwares and productivity all day long. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Maybe we should just have you come on the podcast more often. <laughs> I'm okay with this. Yeah. Um, okay. So what is the, uh, what's your favorite industry event? you have attended and why is it so compelling? Um, man. So, um, and I will follow I, up this with what is your, you know, 
favorite uh, event to go to that can be anything, Burning Man, oh, anything. You know, whatever the hell it is. It doesn't have to be industry. No, but I, I'd like to know the industry one because mm. I'm trying to figure out which ones I should go to, which ones I should <laughs> bother. Um, so this is going to blow your mind completely. Um, I, for the longest time, I so because we were such like a – I don't want to say we're like a newbie to the industry, but we 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 always kind of just wanted to do our thing and just kept going. And we're like, hey, we're gonna make a splash on our own. I actually don't go to a lot of industry events, to be honest. I'm going to more of them now. Now that I am traveling more often anyway, so I'm usually like in the city that it's going on anyways, right. or I can fly easier to it. But I actually don't go to a ton of industry stuff. Um, so IMAX was actually really really cool. It was really huge, and I felt like I was like in a we were talking about Epcot because you're like you're seeing all the different countries all over yeah. the place. In the city. Yeah, 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 it is. So that was really, really cool. But, um, you know, I, I definitely, as I'm, we've become more of an industry influencer because of the content we've done, it makes also the industry events a lot more fun as well. Because before I go to these events and maybe I know one person, you're like, hugging that person you're like hip 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 to hip the entire time trying to you don't want to leave because this is the only person you know but i went to imax and the event tech the year and when i remember being in that room and like being like oh my gosh like mike like you do av for planners like oh my gosh i've heard of av for planners i listen to your podcast like and you like you had heard of me uh -huh. and it was awesome because it made the events a lot less being like I'm Will Kern from Endless Entertainment. Oh, what does Endless do? Oh, we'll give you the elevator pitch right, or anything like that. Right. Make it make it surface level that instantly like we were already friends and we already all knew each other. So um, that was really cool. So I'll probably be at way more industry events now. So maybe in like a year, come back to me and let me know. Or yeah. we'll, we'll re-answer that question. Well, you um, know, when I when I started out in the, when I started my company twelve years ago, before that I had never been to one. Oh no! I had already been in the business for ten years, oh, working wow. for a, a large production company before I started mine, and I was just like, "What are these?" Like I had heard of them, but then everybody yeah. at my old company had said, "Oh, it's a waste of money." You go, they just want money from you. It's like, uh, and so, but but then I went because I just wanted to meet people, mm -hmm. and just as you said, like going into that room. It is interesting that now I was just talking to Michelle Bruno, who was in that room also. You know Michelle Bruno. Yeah, yeah. She's a great. I just interviewed her yesterday, actually. And oh, awesome. she, she and I were talking about, I only go to them now to see people because like, I don't even go to the sessions and stuff, Yep. which I, you know, I think I should be giving sessions on some of them because I think oh. that's how you can meet more people. But oh. I, uh, she and I were talking about, you know, we should just put together an event with all the people we like and, tag it, <laughs> you know, tag it onto one of these events. Exactly. Exactly. Have, like, it's just a big networking day. And yeah, maybe absolutely. something going. Maybe people can get, come up and give a little, you know, a short thing or something. But it's mostly about networking. I totally, mean, totally. see people in person. So anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to jump on your parade. This is your show. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. I, I totally agree with the whole idea. So what is your favorite event to go to uh, just in general? Like, what do you look forward to every year? What do you not miss uh -huh. even if work is something happening, you know, because I know that's now in your world is like, yeah. I have, do I choose between work or do I go? What is yeah. it do not miss? What is the one you want to go to, maybe? Um, so I'm lucky that I, they're my clients now. Um, is that all the Comic Cons? I'm a huge comic book nerd. Um, so, um, so that's the easy answer. Is that just getting to go to Comic Cons is so awesome. Watching them evolve and grow. Um, getting to see, you know. Stephen Amell from Arrow, who's like one of my favorite actors in the TV shows, amazing. So that's really really cool. And now they're my clients, so it's like I get to like go to the shows for free and to actually technically get paid. I guess to, yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. So really really cool. But um, that that's really really nice. Um, one of my favorite events I think I've ever been to that I really enjoyed. Um, I haven't. I've only been to one. Is uh, Conscious Capitalism did a conference in San Diego one year. Um, it was like their conscious capitalism. I, forget, I think it was just called conscious capitalism was a conference uh -huh. and they did such a good job making this like 500, 600 person conference feel so small and intimate through the use of technology and tools um, and things like that, uh, that it was really, really cool. And I had a really, really good time at it. And I think the flow of it went really well. It never felt rushed that I was going session to session. Um, so um, that uh, is definitely one of my favorite events I've ever been to for sure. Um, I'm a big EDM electronic guy. So going to see all my favorite EDM artists uh, is really, really fun. Um, and luckily, um, good friends, uh, family friends, long time and ironically with like one of the biggest promoters here in Arizona. So I get to go to all the EDM events all the time nice. and check them out. Um, so really, really cool. Um, so I'd say like that. that's probably it. Comic cons and probably like, you know, alternative conferences that are kind of trying to break the typical business uh, conference mold. Um, and then like a lot of electronic music festivals. <laughs> very, very cool. Okay. So um, 
we're going over a little long, which I figured we would anyway. But uh, <laughs> let me let me ask you one last question. So, if you oh. could talk to your high school senior self, would you tell your what, what would you tell yourself? Would you do something differently, or would you do the same thing? I'm like yeah. la I'm laughing so long hard because that's like the year I started my company. So I'm oh. like, oh my gosh, what would I tell myself? <laughs> um, oh gosh. Um, to be honest, I uh, ooh, there are so many things. I would definitely tell myself um, that things are going to get way bigger than you think they are going to, and start work. You can start thinking bigger. I think that was always something that. You know, you, your mind thinks uh, like I was like, oh, man, I want to do one large scale event by the time I graduate college. And I ended up doing one like six months later, you know, um, and it was one of those things that broke through. And then, you know, I never, ever thought I'd have a Comic Con as a client. And now I do like all of them, you know, um, that was always really, really exciting, I think. And I think if I have told myself, hey, you can do like beyond what you even think is possible. I think I would have probably had like been able to push my limits even more. And I think a lot of times it sounds so lame, but you're definitely limited by your own like imagination for sure. And I think that a lot of times I was like, yeah, I want to do high school dances. What if I was like, I don't do high school dances. I want to do EDC. And I was working on getting EDC since, you know, first freshman year of college, I probably would have been doing, you know, EDC by now, you know, like that sort of stuff. So, um, um, really, really, I think that was a really important piece of advice that I would definitely tell myself. Very cool. All right. Well, Will, where can people um, get a hold of you? If they, they want to contact you, where can they get a hold of you? Totally. So I'm on all the major social networks. Um, my name is Will, W-I-L-L, -L, and my last name is Kern, C-U-R-R-A-N. Um, and you can search that and you'll find all my Twitter handle, my LinkedIn. Add me on LinkedIn, utilize my network so you can have some more net worth as well. Um, and definitely my biggest resource that you can start on, and just in case you didn't, you didn't see how I spell my name or anything like that, is my website, hello, H-E-L-L-O, endless, E-N-D-L-E-S-S dot -S -S com. That's Hello Endless, um, and check that out. That's our blog. All of our resources are on there. And if you have any questions at all, you can always email me. My email is will at helloendless.com. Super easy. And I'm really, really open to always chatting with people and helping them out, hopping on phone calls like crazy. So, um, you know, I'm really, really accessible. Very cool. Thanks, Will. And I, I hope to have you back on the show again soon. Yeah, definitely. To to I'd love to come back. Thanks so much for having me, Mike. Okay, talk to you soon.